Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. It really helps me out if you like, comment, subscribe, and if you would consider purchasing from one of my sponsors in the description. Thanks a bunch. Hey everybody, well, I have been taking a bit of a break. I really enjoy making these videos and it seems like people get something out of them, but I am back for this PRR S2 turbine, which they've released as a brass hybrid in Paragon 4. Huh, never seen that kind of warning label before. Uh, but it makes sense. I generally do that, unless I'm really lazy with a locomotive I don't care about. Got some traction tires with the little thing to help you replace them. Let's go ahead and get this out of here and I'll do a walk around for you. How about that? For my followers who know me well, you know that I actually have one of these already. I have one of the earlier models. I don't know, was it Paragon 2 or Paragon 3? I've already got one. And from what I can tell, these are pretty much exactly the same externally anyhow. I looked them over and I really couldn't find any difference whatsoever, except that I got the new fantasy scheme and my other one was, well, they didn't have a fantasy scheme then, so I did the standard non-fantasy. And yeah, looking them over, I just really don't see any difference here. So yeah, everything looks about the same. Um, the fantasy scheme one, I actually bought for a very special purpose that I will talk about later in the future. But here we go. Since I've got both and they look the same, if you're thinking about getting the non-fantasy scheme version, this one should look uh, about right for you. Now, one thing I noticed about these two locomotives is that I'm not entirely sure if they benefit from being in brass. And if you look in a way, the brass details are a little bit meaty. They're a little bit chunky, which I expect out of ABS plastic, but not brass. Um, it, again, it doesn't look bad. I just don't know if these locomotives really needed a brass treatment. They're very utilitarian. They're very plain. There's not a lot of stunning details on them that needed to stick out or that needed to be done better than plastic could do it so i'm just i'm just not sure if it was warranted here but if you want an s2 you're gonna have to get it in brass hybrid but if you look at it i again it's i like the locomotive i don't think it'll appeal to a lot of people um you know if, if you're into kind of more standard stuff i think you know who you are if you want one of these and of course you know all the details are nice it has I noticed the newer one has slightly more uh, painted surface inside of the cab than my older one. Here's the inside. You can see the dials here are at least faced in white, but there's no other details than that. But you can see that there's, there's certainly a lot of detail in um, the rest of everything. And there are cab figures included in this one, whereas in my older one, there aren't any cab figures. Of course, uh, I bought mine used, so maybe somebody took those out. I'm not entirely sure, but that's what we have. Well, let's take a look at some of the other features here, including the lighting. You saw the lights on actually in the previous one, but there's a cab light that comes on when it's stopped and then it turns off again when it starts to roll. The headlights look pretty good. They're a nice warm LED. It's kind of a nice throwback to have the crystal in for the other lights, but at this price, maybe LEDs would have been appropriate. The tenders have both the red lights when it's going forward, and then when you flip it around, it has a light to illuminate whatever they need to illuminate when going in reverse. So pretty standard stuff. There's nothing particularly special about it, but at least what they did do, I think they got right. So. There we go. Now these two are some of the smokiest boys in my Scuderia. They are incredibly smoky, especially my older one. It's really, really smoky. Uh, you can turn the smoke volume down. I left mine, well, I don't know what the original one had, but the new one I left at default. And you can see my older one is notably <laughs> smokier. But certainly if you like smoke, and I do, there is ample amounts to go around on these things, so. <laughs> That's something you really want if you get these and you want to use the smoke. These things actually flooded up my area pretty quick when they were just sitting there. Um, yeah, you can see here, <laughs> it dominates the frame almost. The My older one, it's smoke unit never went out and while I was running my new one, the smoke unit didn't go out either. So Broadway Limited got something right there, thankfully. 
coupler height when tested was just a little bit high. I don't know if this is going to cause you problems. I, it certainly won't for me because I use the bigger coupler heads, but maybe if you, yeah, it looks like even if you use the standard scale coupler heads, you're going to be fine there, but something to note if that's of concern to you. Big difference between my old one and my new one is that my old one does not have a capacitor. Press the button, it dies immediately. With the newer one, that's not the case. You press the button and it will actually run for a little bit on its own. It's important to note that the capacitor only holds up the sound and the motion. It does not hold up the light or the smoke unit. I actually think that is a big mistake. And the reason why is the capacitor kind of holds back the electrical bounce that'll happen from it perhaps coming back on real quick if it grabs another good part of track. Yeah, it's, it's a mistake. They should hold up everything if possible. With Broadway Limited steam engines, there's one CV change I make out of the box right away, and that is the CV so that when you select F7, the smoke comes on. By default, the smoke is on as soon as the power comes on. I think that's also a really big mistake. If you've run your smoke unit dry or something like that, who knows what kind of happened, what kind of damage could happen. Uh, I think the smoke unit should be off until you turn it on, and the way we do that is we set bit seven of CV246 to zero. You can keep the other ones the same, but bit seven has to be um, zero. So um, yeah, it ends up six. If you wanna type in the uh, actual um, locomotive address, it is 216 for CV17 and 56 for 18. And you can set 29 to either 34 or 38. 38 if you want to use the speed tables, 34 if you don't. I actually like using just three points speed matching and I will have to speed match this in the future so I'm going to use 34. So now that I have 34 in there I'm going to go in and change my two address bits. 17 is going to be, what would we say, 216. Plop that in there. Yep, looks good. It took it. And then 18, what did we say that was? My memory's starting to go, there we go, 56. All right, so that will give us the cab number if you want 6200. One of the problems I have with BLI steam locomotives over and over again is track continuity. And what's nice is since the capacitor in these doesn't hold up the lights, I can tell if it's grabbing power from the rails or not by watching for the flickering of the lights. And so I usually follow it around, and if those tail lights there flicker, I know that it's lost continuity over my unpowered points and other parts of the track, which the tank job of a Blue Goose had a lot of problems with, both versions. But yeah, what do you know, this looks like it's going to make it around my track all the way without a single flicker. And in fact, that's the case with my other S2. It makes it around. It is the best BLI steam locomotive I have in terms of its continuity. Yeah, it's cool, but it kind of makes me wonder, it makes me a little bit mad that they can't do this with their other locomotives, BLI. Come on. Broadway Limiteds aren't known for having the best low speed performance straight out of the box, and this one is no exception. This is notch one out of 128. It's okay, like most Broadway Limited locomotives, it goes slow, but not super slow, it definitely doesn't crawl. And that's pretty much what we have here. You can only hope with the new iteration, Paragon 5, that they use ESU lock sound, because those just have much better low speed control. They're superior to anything out of the box I've ever seen, and I'd, I'd like to see that in the future. All right, let's go ahead and run through the sounds for you. Looking forward to this, it's not a regular steam engine, so it's gonna sound a bit odd.
Okie dokie, well, here is my wrap-up for you. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed watching this, and then I'll, uh, I'll give you a running session while I'm talking here, and I'll let this run out at the end. All right, well, the first good thing about this is the fact that these work. I, they work better than basically any other BLI locomotive that I have, except for some of my Paragon 2s. Those work well. Um, I guess with this new Paragon 4, they must have carried over the design from the old S2 that I have, and it runs just fine. Why Broadway Limited can't make these things work like this with every other locomotive? I have no idea. Obviously, they were able to do it once. Why can't they do it regularly and consistently? Another good thing is these work pretty well on relatively small radius turns. The uh, Fleet of Modernism train there with the Tuscan Fantasy S2 is running on 28 inch curves. Has no problems, have no problems derailing. In fact, Going back to the other thing, uh, you know, these work and they, they work well and they're actually a real pleasure to run. 
And to be fair, they do look good. They're good looking steam engines. Well, I guess, they're, yeah, they're still a steam engine, even though they're turbine, they look good. Uh, certainly like the smoke unit, look at that going by. But, you know, do they really need to be in brass? I think this is actually one of the locomotives that would have done well being in plastic. In fact, you know, the details are kind of ABS for what it's worth. They look kind of plasticky already. In fact, if I didn't know that this was a brass hybrid, I would think it was ABS. The details, you know, especially like the banding and the pipes that fit together, there's a bit of a kind of a chunky, puffy quality to them that I'm used to seeing out of ABS, but not necessarily out of brass. So potentially more people could have enjoyed this if they would have made it in plastic, it would have brought the cost down some, but you know, it's obvious that they're using the tooling that they had around from the last run. So I guess it was more cost effective for them to do it this way. Maybe I'm a bit spoiled because of uh, the Chinese locomotives I have, but it seems like for this money, there could have been more lighting options. There could have been firebox flicker, the two lights up front, I guess the, the marker lights or whatever they're called, they could have actually been LEDs and not just simply those glass crystal, those glass prisms. It's a nice touch. It's kind of a throwback to older brass locomotives and older locomotives in general. But for this price, I think they could have done a little bit more in terms of the lighting options. And although you can't hear it, the acoustics once again are typical Broadway limited. They're rattly and a bit crackly and they're over compressed. You'll probably want to turn the volume down some. Uh, you know, you can't really hear it super well, but I can hear it. There's a lot of rattling. It's not as bad as uh, the EAEB tank job sounds that I had to make a separate video about. But again, I, I don't understand how somebody from Broadway Limited listens to these and go, yeah, that's, that's what our consumers want. They want clipped audio, overly compressed audio, audio that rattles because of something they've got stuck in the tender. I'm not quite sure what the philosophy is there. And I think they can do better I think they've been able to do better for quite a while, and yet they refuse to for some reason. Overall though, I'm, I'm happy with these, and you know, I guess I'm thankful that I can afford to be happy with these and happy with two of these. It's nice to have a Broadway limited locomotive that runs around my track without any kind of interruptions and that has smoke units that work and continue to work. There's something different about these steam engines that they didn't incorporate into any of the others that I have from them, except for a couple Paragon 2 locomotives that I have, which work fine. I don't know what it is with a company in the late 20 teens and early 2020s that can't make a locomotive that picks up from the track okay. In fact, this locomotive has uh, a capacitor in it, but doesn't really need one. I've never needed one on the older one. This one I don't think needs one either, but it's nice to have in there, although once again, I think it's a big mistake that they're not allowing the capacitor to protect things like the lights and the smoke unit. I think that's a really big mistake. But either way, um, this doesn't even need one. If it can go around my track, it can go around anybody's track. And I think that's a real testament to the build quality of this particular locomotive. But it is also, unfortunately, uh, it's actually a bit of a stand against Broadway locomotives, other locomotives. You can do it for these. You know, why is my blue goose, why are the, both the blue gooses that I owned and I returned one, why are they so terrible around my track? And I've got a lot of, you know, why is my K4 so terrible around the track? It doesn't make sense that they can do it here, but they can't do it elsewhere. And so I hope they get that straightened out. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll let this session run out for you and I'll post this separately at some other time also. But love to know your thoughts on this. Um, and again, thanks for, uh, it took about two weeks off. I love making these, I really do, but they are pretty time consuming and they're pretty energy consuming. And so I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna step back for a couple weeks and just take a bit of a spring break. And I've done that and now I'm back, but there are more Broadway Limiteds coming up, uh, more Chinese locomotives, cause I'm gonna finish off my collection there, which is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. And some stuff from Europe also, if you're interested. I also have some diorama projects that I worked on over the two weeks that I'm gonna start showing you as we go forward. I'm gonna start to do a lot more diorama builds. Um, so I hope that helps people. Okay, well, uh, you know, happy model railroading. I'm happy you're here. Thanks a lot. I'd appreciate it if you'd like, comment. And if you really like my stuff, go ahead and subscribe. That way you'll get a notification if you press the notification bell every time I publish something. 
So take care, everybody, out in Model Railroad land. Stay safe as per usual. And yeah, let me know what you're up to. Really curious as to what you'll do over the summer in terms of model railroading. So have fun. Talk to you later. See you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.